If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you. Hi, this is Melanie Johnson. I'm one of the owners of Elite Online Publishing. Welcome to our event. Today, we have Laurel Langmeyer with us. If you are not familiar with her work, then you should be. She has helped Jen and I in the past. She has pushed and moved us forward. She is a money expert. She is a New York Times five-time author of New York Times bestselling books. And if you want to know how to make money with your book, how to use it, how to leverage it, and then take it and set up everything correctly, then you are in the right place today. So Laurel, thank you so much. It's great to see you again. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great to be here. And in my category, I've made hundreds of millions of dollars. And it started with this thing called the brochure book, right? And then I got five New York Times on this thing, or not on this thing, but on just across my... And soon yeah. So tell us, I love how you just started out saying, that's how it started was with this book. That's what kicked everything off. So tell us like... How you kicked it off, how you used the book. Backstory, I didn't grow up like this. I always have to make that disclaimer. People say, yeah, people like Laurel, they just had it handed. Now I grew up in a farm in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Long story, I have a finance degree, exercise physiology degree. I was actually in the health space, building fitness centers on offshore oil rigs for a huge period of my life. 1996, met Robert Kiyosaki, Sharon Lecter. That got me into this space. And I say those who are new authors that are listening and thinking, how do I do this? If you don't know this space, be in our be our affiliate, come to work for us. I was the master distributor of the cash flow game. So from 1996 to 2000, I was immersed in the Rich Dad Poor Dad brand, mm -hmm. knew how this industry worked. And if you don't know this industry, you have got to get the right mentor. So I knew and I saw the book, I saw the game, which is why I wanted my game, right? So I got the millionaire maker right when I got my book, just like Rich Dad Porter did cash flow. So I just followed along. But selling someone else's stuff and aligning to someone else's brand you can support in 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 alignment and side by side, I'd say with what you're gonna do is so critical. Cause just to go out there and just say, I need a book to have a book. The book is really the starting of your business. And so 1999 became a real estate millionaire, gas and oil real estate millionaire, both. And then I just took people on real estate tours. And what was interesting, Melanie, is in 2003, I started stalking, literally stalking Jay Conrad Leviston because I, he was getting all these other authors to do the Gorilla series. Yeah. And I said, I want to do, I'm gorilla like in wealth, as anybody knows me. So I want a gorilla wealth book. And it was like, no, it was literally a year of stocking to say, I'm going to do a book with you. And here was the hook. I'll make you more money than any of your other authors. And so I just put my money where my mouth is. And we launched a couple of months later, McGraw Hill called and gave me a three book offer. And, but this is where it really began it was 2005 and six, when I got the contract to do the millionaire maker, it hit the best selling Wall Street or New York times by itself organically without any structures. Mm -hmm. I'll say around it. Cause you can structure them. And then you just start coaching up it. You got to build a funnel off of it. And that's what I teach is how do you build the money of it? And so yes. let's talk to the entity side. So in the beginning, most people that are under say quarter million would have one entity. But as you grow, like this intellectual property is this in its own company and it mm -hmm. does business only with my operating company. So you can't get to it because there's no contractual relationship with any of my intellectual property other than my own operating company. And a lot of people, Melanie, that start, they don't understand, they don't treat it well. I know we're going to talk about where the future is going, which is probably the NFT, all this stuff, and really lock it into blockchain and say, whose intellectual property is it? Because think about it, how many people have you, have you walk around and say, I'm the millionaire maker, I'm the millionaire. I can name five guys like that. I'm the millionaire maker and I have the marks. So <laughs> a lot of that is just so critical. But I can tell you, when you launch, do not go publish and write a bunch of stuff until you are pre-selling. Like I'm a huge, not fan. I don't know. I wave fans like screaming at new authors, get out and be with people about what they want you to write about. Mm -hmm. Don't go to your back bedroom or go off to an Island and say, that's some sexy thing to do. You don't write a book by yourself. You write a book with people. 
So yeah, I can I go on the, and on. <laughs> I think that's the first thing. It's real important to know that you have to have a plan before you start to write. You yes. have to have a back end. You have to understand what your audience wants before you just go write. Like some people are, go come to us to write their books. Should it be a memoir? I've got this great story. No, yeah. go with the right. money book first. And walk us through a little bit. Like you're saying, before you start, if you don't have a business already that you're writing the book, but you have an idea to start your company, what should you be doing? Obviously a book is part of that. And then walk us through that part too. So they're set up from the beginning for success. Absolutely. First of all, if you're 18 or older, and like my son, when he was 18, got an LLC for his birthday, he actually signed into many of mine. I have a whole way to get you through college, by the way, that is written off by your company. So that's a whole nother thing. I teach parents how to do financial literacy. And my next book coming out, which will be, it's really the fourth of the Millionaire Maker series is called How to Make Your Kids Millionaires. And it's a zero through 21. What do you do every year? From mm -hmm. when do they get a bank account? When do they get a credit card? Do they own the car? Does your corporation own the car? How does all of this work when you live a corporate millionaire lifestyle? So back to how, how do you start the book? What do you want to do? What is the business? The business won't be the book. And especially with publishing where publishes you know, has gone, the chances of walking in, say, to a Barnes & Noble or Books A Million, I mean, we will be in bookstores. We'll probably do a little bit of the Hudson, which I've been in all of those. Right. Most publishing is just, we sell more audiobooks and eBooks than we do actual written books. And the millennials for sure and the Gen Zs aren't really buying books. They're not like that. There's a random few kids that might do it. Like my daughter's one, she loves books and just the kinesthetic value of it. But a lot of people don't. So it's changed a lot. My whole point is what's the business around it? And I want to go broad because I think a lot of people always think coaching, consulting, mentoring, because mm -hmm. that is my back end. They have a, an enormous yeah. back end of financial literacy, coaching and mentoring. And I have a small little book. I have so many other books too. I have about 50 some books. So I have a small little book that we did, that we wrote for our gas and oil company. We have a small little book that we wrote for the real estate company. So in all of those categories, you get incorporated. So you have the legal right to do all the deductions. And then even with image consultants, I have them do a little book, even in direct sales. Like I have six, seven figure earners in New Skin and Maluka and Ula and all these different direct sales companies. And they have little education. So you got, there's not a category, Melinda, that anybody could tell me that there isn't going to be some education needed around front face with the education i.e. a book, ebook, e any of that. And then what's the next part of your funnel? What's the next part of your funnel? What's the next part of the funnel? And one of the gifts I'm going to give all of our viewers today over in your VIP area is tickets to my marketplace where we actually design it. Not only do we design it, we let you pre-sell your idea. And I think that's critical. And so I'm going to just speak to that for a few minutes. I think so many people, like you said, they can come to you and say, Millie, write us a book. And they have an idea. <clears throat> what I would, I'm going to tell them to do is come to my marketplace and test the idea with 50, 80, 100 people. Do people even want you to write it? I know when I, the only reason I went to Hay House is I want to be part of the God Squad. I think I've told you that story. I wanted to be where Wayne Dyer and all the guys yeah. were. But when I went there, like Reed Tracy said, Laurel, you can't write. Like we don't do finance books. And I said, well, what the heck am I going to write about? And he said, well, you always say yes and figure it out. So write about that whole yes energy. So that's the book. But in that, I went straight out to my database. Everybody who had already bought one of these, I said, hey, I'm going to be doing another book and it's going to be something around this yes theme. What do you want to know? And I survey and I cannot scream that from the rooftops. Ask people, follow you, whether you're on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'm an expert in blah, blah, blah. What do you want me to write about? What would you like to know? And I can tell you what I thought the yes energy book when we all sat down at Hay House, what we thought it was going to be is not what it turned out to be because of the feedback from my audience. And if you're out there saying, I don't have a big audience, 20 people's an audience, 50 people's an audience, right. 100 people are an audience. Get into Melanie's list, get into my world. We have huge audiences. Test, test your premise, I always say, your idea. And here's when you know people really want it, is when they're willing to give you some money. And that's a pre-order. And we have been pre-ordering our Make Your Kids Millionaires book. We started that project you're going to die. This is how long I could stretch it. We started it beginning of 2020 officially. We were going to have it out and just self-publish. And actually, I think we talked to you guys yeah, about, doing it. Talk about you guys doing that whole launch with us. And then it occurred to us that it's really the fourth of this series with McGraw Hill. So we went and honestly just knocked on their door. They gave us a retainer. Shocking. Good. That was yeah. nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We weren't expecting that, but we, right. we needed it to be together in a body of work and we're stretching it now. Like the date will be April, 2022. My point is sharing the duration of over a year of pre-orders okay. is this engagement. You just ask people say, you know, it's coming and this is little parts of it. So you give them little sneak previews. There's so many ways. I think people are so scared to pre-order. 
to do the pre-order because there's such a commitment, like you have to deliver. But I'll tell you, it's number one, it puts tons of money in your pocket. Like my Yes Energy book, we did 55,000 pre-orders. That's over a million dollars cash to hire the publisher, to hire the you guys, to hire, to get my Amazon fixed, to get to, to hire. You have the money because you're pre-ordering. You're not, I would say you're going to launch rich versus launch poor. And so many people launch poor with no tests. Yeah. And what's so great is it gives you an excuse when you do a book to reach out to your database, big or small, or reach out and find other databases, like you said. So it's that communication because you're doing something that's exciting. You're sharing the knowledge and do all that stuff. So I love that. What about once you get the book, so many people get tied into the royalties and it's great that you sold 50,000, $55,000, 50,000 books. That doesn't happen to everybody. So right. it's really the back end. Tell us how you've used the back end of the book to roll them into your programs and things like that. Again, one entity and very soon under my mentoring we will have two. And when you really do it right, any six, seven figure business that's operating that has a book in an intellectual property would have three. A minimum of three companies need to be interacting to really protect a proper launch. The next mistake I see, so first of all, just doing the book. Most people yeah. don't pre-order, right? They spend tons of money. They launch poor. They spend all their money. They're down to nothing. And then they launch. And then the next mistake, like literally within nanoseconds, you should have already pre-programmed a webinar, a series, a follow-up series, a follow-up funnel. So once the book goes, what's the next thing? Immediately. I don't know how many people that I've watched, they launch, they're super excited. They hit an Amazon or something. And then they, what are you yes. rest, resting? You don't have time to rest. You're on fire. You have buyers at whatever, seven, 20, 25, $30. Mm -hmm. You move them immediately into at least as around a two to $500 product. You move them right into something. And then from there, you get them on phone calls and you sell them into the next thing. So you move people. So that whole back end that everybody talks about, the funnel, the pricing, that has to be predetermined, pre-programmed. And some of the fun techniques that, that we do, like with our book, we're going to be clearly doing a, now you got the book, right? Once they get the, the kid's book. And I've done this almost with every book. We do, and Jake Abraham gave me this idea, and we call it a reading room. We're going to read it together. Now that you all have it, I love right? it. So around April, 2022 is the launch. So regardless of when everybody's listening, it already happened or it's happening. And then in May and June, we're going to spend time saying, all right, read, eat, whether regardless of if you have kids at certain ages, you still have to do catch up. When they were born, you should have employed them. When they were born, you should have got them a Roth IRA. When they were born, you needed to get all this stuff together during the nine months of baking them. <laughs> so yeah. when they come out of the oven, they're ready to go. And they are staged to be a millionaire. So we're going to read the book and you can do it in a webinar format. And I don't say we're going to read it word for word. We're going to say, all right, read chapters one to three. We're going to come to a call. And Kyle, I'm doing it with an Air Force fighter pilot. And we're, we're co-authoring the book. And then we're going to work with people on it. But that's going to be pre-staged. And then I don't think you can see it on my shelf. But the other thing I'm known for is wine, as most people know me. So we always take, which we got to think about that with the kids book. But still the parents will probably drink the wine. But I'm known for giving bonuses and giving all sorts of fun collateral. So if you bought 12 books, then I send you so many bottles of wine with the label, with the cover of the book is the label of the wine. And then I have a whole way I strategize and I make money on the wine. I still today sell my Yes Energy wine because it was just so well branded and so well done. So I think you got to come up with some fun themes and fun engagement, but your book launch, in my opinion, starts three, four, five, six months before, and you go for, a, I'm going to say a year after, why would you let it die? You get on every potential platform you get everywhere that you can get to continue to market that book. And if you think that you can just hire publicists to do it all, they'll mm. do an okay job, but they aren't going to do, they don't care about the back end. That's the problem. They don't care about your funnel. They don't care that you move people through mm -hmm. to a database that you actually then can monetize. There's so many authors that have come to us that maybe have already launched their book that I don't know what to do. It launched and now it's just sitting there. And if you didn't come up with a marketing plan of how to use that for your business, to send it to the top 10 people that you're trying to get your foot in the door and to leverage that for all the different ways. Because like you said, it's not just the $2.50 royalty you're going to get. It's how many people did I roll into my funnel that turned into $10,000 customers, $20,000 customers, and referred me to three more $20,000 customers. That's what it really all stems through. Yep. Yeah. And it's so critical to think about just doing it for your ego I'm gonna say, is interesting. 
You really need to do it for a business. And I really caution people that are want to write a huge autobiography where I guide them. And I don't know, I always say, do a legacy piece for your family, that your legacy of between a video and a book of what do you want your grandkids and your kids and kids to have known about you, but do it in more of that form. People just buying other people's stories, unless you're giving a lesson through it or something that's valuable, what's in it for me to read your story. Right. Now, how many of those do you see? Those are sad. The amount of work some of those people have done. And it's they end up with a scrapbook sometimes. So we always say, if you want to tell your story, we can interwine some of your greatest stories with the business things that you're trying to learn or teach to other people. I wanted to ask you, what do you think are some of the biggest pitfalls that people come across when they're trying to write their book? I mean, you've taken really your books and turned it, leveraged it into a whole business. What do you feel are some of the other challenges that people, why maybe they don't do it? Oh, I have an excuse. I don't have enough time. I don't have this. You run across the The number one that I see, it was the time. If they had just have an excuse about it. And my advice always is I never typed mine. I still today will not type. I just won't do it. Could I do it? Yes. It's not efficient. It's not what I want to do. And what I find with most people, I'd say 99% is you can free form your thought when you speak it. So I want you to speak your book, have it transcribed. You can go to Otter, go to Rev. I mean, there's tons of transcription services, have it transcribed. And then you have something to work with. And then honestly, if you're not a good writer, which most people aren't, hand it to an editor. Hand it to you guys. I don't think you're going to do it. You're going to stumble around in there for so long. And I don't really, here's the other thing too. I just, this is my new funny, it's not new, but it's refreshing. As I would say there's no such thing as writer block because you shouldn't be writing anyway. And the only reason there's writer block is because you write a sentence or you write a paragraph and then you go back and you reread it. And you're going like, oh, it shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't even be in that little narrative. You shouldn't be in all those little nano details. That is not your job as an author. Your job is to bring your brains. That's what I always say a book is. It books your brains on paper, right? So bring your knowledge, put it on paper, do it through an interview. Like we could write a book off this, right? You and I could do a quick little ebook and we could have this transcribed. We tidy it up. We might give some formulas and we might give some goodies and just this alone, probably you you know this better than I am. What do you think? 20, 30 pages? Yeah. I, yeah. There, there's a lot of words. I talk really fast. So I, there's a lot of words. So pages and all of a sudden we have an ebook. And I just think people stumble around on that first phase of just getting it done. Yeah. We have a product we call a VIP book creation day where they come in for a full day. And at the end of the day, they have almost half or more of their book written. It's all outlined, formatted. They have their target audience identified. And that's what you really need to do. Similar to what you're doing. It's like, why are you writing this book and coming up with all that? So I'm so excited. You've got another book in your series coming out. Tell us, what do you feel the future of publishing is? NFTs. I do. And I've actually had a few proposals. It's interesting. I'll just give you a little backstory about my kids. You do all this. And I love that your son, we met at what, 13 and now he's rocking. 21. Yeah. He's 21 and killing it. So my son's 22 off school, becoming a CPA, probably will specialize in cannabis because we own farms. But it's interesting looking back and I own that huge conference center at Zephyr Cove, Nevada, up at the lake in Lake Tahoe and sold it and taking down essentially 20 years of a legacy off the walls of every, the other thing I do too, I got to say this is I have a book launch party. I am known for having huge union square in San Francisco was my millionaire maker, a total white tie, black tie event, formal, and then all the way down to cowboy boots and jeans and rocking parties with bands. So I always have a big party and then I have people sign. So I have these huge, just photos. And then all my, all my stuff, right? All my paraphernalia with all my New York times or the newspapers all framed. Anyway, we did take down 12,000 square feet of memorabilia. It's like my kids woke up like, oh my God, we're not ending this. And I said, no, we're moving. We're going to change the business model. We're going to shift the whole, I'm doing this. I'm staying home with my kids. I'm having fun. I said, so we're shifting, but there, it became this whole thing about how are we going to preserve the legacy? This was a heck of a ride. And and who knew when I got contracted to do this, that, what is it? So this was 2006, 15 years later, I had to go make my kids millionaires that another one would be created. So now it does need to get boxed. It does needs to be preserved in its format and NFTs. Now that they're here, I think will become the future of, of preserving, especially people who have my work. It's very curriculum based. It's not just yes. a bunch of hype and, you know, woo woo bunch of shit. It's very structured. This is how you become a millionaire. We're going to, we have a matrix. We're going to go through every piece of it and NFT, how this got documented and it will preserve that legacy. I was going to say for my kids, because it's been an interesting transition for my kids to see a very huge stage presence, world presence to mom just goes 
to a small office now and doesn't travel around. And I sold my plane. Dan Kennedy, one of my greatest mentors, greatest writers, I think of all times. He and Ron LeGrand told me, if, they, if you want to get off the road, sell your plane. I'm like, sell my plane. And I did. And I'm off the road. Because <laughs> the thought of getting on the commercial aircraft is you got to be kidding. Like one yeah. of those with other humans? No. So anyway, it's a fun story. It preserves your legacy. So if you're going into it for the legacy, just know that it's a ride. And it's not one that's easy to get off. I would say that as somebody who's very mature in the space, I've been in the space now 25 years, but don't think you're just going to be a one and done. If you want to make money, if you really want to have a sustainable brand, you're going to, you're going to be at it for a little while. You just don't get to get off this yeah. very easily once you begin. You always say three books, the start the one gives you credibility. <laughs> and then the second one gives the momentum. And you have to have at least three books for your business or businesses to get the momentum and really cement that credibility. One book is great, but three, three is better. And if someone doesn't know what an NFT is, it's a non-fungible token and it has a contract on the back end. And uh, we're going to tell you more about that in some of our other talks, but that is the wave of the future. So if you haven't consumed Laurel's content, I would suggest like we've done in our family is go to one of her events and consume everything you get your hands on that you can listen to read of hers from start to finish. You will be super educated. And I think that's part of my son's success is yeah. that we knew how to structure his entity and do all this stuff that we learned from Laurel. So she has an amazing bonus. Tell us about the amazing bonus that you have in the VIP area. So that program that you went to where I met Nathan, the three days to cash, we ran that from 2007 till about 17 and 18. We took it off the road. And so when COVID hit in March, 2020, we knew that content, and you know that workshop, it's just world-class. Everybody made money. It was fun. It was everybody left feeling amazing because they made, some people only made a little bit of money. As you know, some people made tens and twenties and fifties. I think the most ever made was 52,000 in one room with one person. And they were selling books that then sold the workshop and then sold their coaching. So it was fun. So we said, we got to bring it back because people are going to be unemployed. And they're going to need a choice and a chance and a pathway to become an amazing entrepreneur. So we brought it back. We now call it our Millionaire Maker Meetup and Marketplace because you're going to meet up with other people. You're going to learn to marketplace. So very similar. People will come with something they're going to sell, right? So you can sell a little network marketing company, a little CBD lotion. You can sell a little coffee. You can sell whatever the heck you want. You pre-order your book, hence, and get out here. And especially because I'm the one, and I do teach it. I don't sub this out. I teach it live. It's 13-hour event. It goes from 10 to 6 on a Thursday and 10 to 3 on a Friday. And we put you in a marketplace. So I teach, you go to marketplace. I teach, you go to marketplace. Next day, same thing. And we just had a woman make $21,000 last weekend on Thursday. She made it in one day. She just learned some of the techniques. And she didn't make it in the marketplace of the room of the people. She took it because I encourage you, I said, go to your database, take these skills, my ass, tell ass, and get out on the phone and call people that you could have, should have, would have closed, but you didn't have the right technique or the objection handling. So it's, it's a real transactable event. It's not when you just sit back and listen in the background while you're cooking or doing something. You got to be face forward. I guarantee as long as you participate, you will make money. And I honor that promise, but you got to pay attention. If you go like this, right, I'm just going to do it. You're out of the game immediately. Because I can't see your pretty little face. And you say, well, what if I just have a radio face? I've been told that over. And I said, I really don't care. I need to see you that you're engaged. And the marketplace is fun. It's a place where you, you get to do this pre-order. You get to learn deposits. You get to learn contracts for cash. So I teach all these techniques of how do you, from bootstrapping to raising capital, how do you bring it in? It's so fun. So we're going to give people two tickets for free to come to our event. I highly recommend it. We've been through it ourselves. So I can't tell you she's the real deal. Make sure that you grab that and get into the VIP area and do that. Laurel, thanks so much for attending Thank today you. and giving all this knowledge and sharing what you thought and how a book has really blown up your brand and how it was the cornerstone of your business. Thanks for everything. We really appreciate it. Appreciate being here. Take care. Awesome. Go. If you want to write a book and become a best-selling author, you're in the right place. At Elite Online Publishing, we can help you create, publish, and market your book so that it becomes a number one bestseller. We work with a limited number of authors to ensure that they receive the best possible service. So if you want to learn how to write and publish a book that will empower you to smartly grow your brand, business, and credibility, apply today. We look forward to working with you.